What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival. This is episode number 42 and this is the last episode that we will be in space because in this episode, we're going back to Pertam. That's right, we're going back to the roots of this series, back to Pertam. It's right below us, it has been this entire time and we're going to be going back. In fact, I'll even show you that it's right here below us. In case this is your first episode tuning in, we're right above Pertam on our space base. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so this is the last episode we're going to be in space and in this episode, we're going to be making the drop pod and the little satellite thing that we had said we were going to make from the start. Uh, we'll make those things and then we'll pretty much go back to uh, Pertam. That said, um, last episode we added some guns. And uh, that sometimes spawns Reavers. Uh, we also added an antenna that also kind of uh, alerts them of your location. So it appears we have our first Reaver attacking us. And even though I'm talking in a calm voice, I'm very scared because I don't know what's about to happen. Let me hop in here. I was still doing the intro, so I don't know. Oh gosh, I don't even have anything I can connect to. Uh, do I have turrets? Let's grab this guy right here. I hope, they're, I hope they have ammo. Add control. Let's add the other turret right here. Where is it? I don't know which one it is. We have too many. Wait, where are these Gatling? I didn't even know we had three. Okay, let's just use this one. Uh, it appears... Okay, yeah, this one can actually aim at it. We have ammo. We do have ammo. This is like an artillery thing, I think. So if it hits it, we're, we're doing pretty well. Now, this base is not made out of heavy stuff, so... Yeah. Oh, oh okay. It. Uh, I think it just crashed directly into us. Um, which means two things. First of all, the Reaver is no longer a threat. Second of all... Uh, we might have some damage. Let's go outside real quick and find out if we do. I think we should be safe, though, uh, from that Reaver. We're gonna hop out this way. And let's, uh, let's check it out. Okay. I saw some ice falling, so I'm gonna go and grab a little bit of that. Yoink. I don't wanna grab the ice yet. I'll grab the ice in a second. I just wanna grab a couple of scraps, maybe. It's gonna go all the way back down to Pertam, creating a nice crater for us to land in. Now, where'd that ice go? There it is. Okay. And yoink. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is interesting. The Reaver crashed into here-ish, it seemed like, but it didn't actually do any damage. Or at least I don't see any, unless it did some, like, small damage to these things. Uh, it could have also just crashed into the rock. Uh, maybe right here? It could have been right here. I don't actually know for sure. Uh, oh, no, it actually crashed right here. Okay, that wasn't actually that bad. I'm happy. That's good. Our first Reaver attack was not actually that terrible. Um... Let's go back here, we'll we'll do our repairs, and then we'll be good to continue our intro. Okay, if you wanted to see more of a Reaver attack, do not worry one bit, because we're going back to Pertam, and Pertam is known, uh, at least in this series, for sending Reavers at us non-stop. So don't worry, we're going to have our Reavers once we get back down to the planet. Uh, let's put one of these here. Uh, so this episode, what we're going to start off with is a little uh, tour of the base. I'm not going to give a tour right now, like me, but I recorded a little bit of footage that you can see. So we'll put it to some music and uh, enjoy this little, this little tour. All right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that tour. That's pretty much the state of the base right now. It's a, a lot of it's complete. I did a little bit of work on the bottom, uh, which actually, no, maybe we can see through the window. Um, kind of, yeah, you can kind of see the top of the vents right there. Uh, I added a couple vents in those in, in those rooms, and uh, they're actually now all airtight. So the the whole base is airtight now. If the doors are closed, if the doors are open, we still have problems. But um, but yeah, there are still a bunch more things I wanted to do to the base, a bunch of smaller things that would have taken a lot of time. We'll eventually get around to them when we come back to space uh, in, 
I don't know, future episodes. But anyway, let's get started. What I want to do first is I want to do the satellite thing. So we had said that we'd make like a, a little satellite craft that we can basically connect to from Pertam. So whenever we want to, we can connect to it from Pertam and have like a, a view downward uh, onto Pertam. So we can sort of see like a, a mini map of Pertam. Uh, we can zoom in and stuff. I think it'd be cool. I don't know how it would work out, but I think what we're going to do instead of the craft is we're going to do a uh, just a camera on the bottom of this base because it kind of makes sense. The base has a perfect view of Pertam. Uh, why not just stick a camera on the bottom of the base? Then we don't have to worry about keeping it flying 24-7. Uh, I think that's the best of both worlds. So let's grab a camera and we will use this one right here. So we're going to go to the bottom of the base, which I think the fastest way there would be just to use this thing right here. So let's hit this button. And we are good. All right. So the bottom of the base, I think we're just going to make like a little area. All right, there's our camera, and it should be aiming right down to Pertem. So let's go in our seat and see what the camera looks like. So ideally what's gonna happen is we would be able to connect to it from Pertem uh, using antennas, and then we can uh, kind of see what's going on down there. All right, let's go into that camera and see. Okay, so we can zoom into Pertem. Uh, what can we really see? <laughs> Not that much. Um, and we can't really even look around either. Okay, hangar's right there in the bottom, and we can't even really see that. Okay, so you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna build a little station then on that little asteroid that's right next to us, kind of on, in the top of our screen now, uh, because it's kind of obscuring our view a little bit of the planet, so I want to uh, I want to build something there. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna be, that's not gonna be that hard, I don't think. Okay, so a little station just kind of right here. Let's turn on our flashlight so we can actually see this asteroid. Press B to align to gravity. Uh, yep, there we go. And we're gonna place it right here. Um, and I'll build probably a quadrant. Actually, we want to make this an odd thing. So I'm thinking if I want to have this be able to uh, look around and stuff, I'm gonna have I'm gonna want to use the custom uh, turret controller uh, for this camera, just like I used for the custom turrets we have over here. Although in this case we're not making a turret, we're making a uh, a camera that's able to zoom around. So let's go here and use our uh, one of these. We're just gonna make a rotor. Then we're gonna have a uh, well. Let's let's get the rotor welded in first. Let me get a bunch of these welded in. I'll come back with a bunch of blocks because we have to go back to the base to get them anyway. All right, let's build up the rotor. This rotor as well. We're going to take actually this off. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to add small rotor head. Thank you very much. Oops. And we're going to add a... Wait, can I not build a small rotor? Oh, because it needs small steel tubes. Okay. Um, we have an ember thing coming toward us, but I think it should be fine. It's a heavy Corvette though. And I'll, I'll give this thing uh, 20 uranium. I don't think it's going to use it very... Like, I think that's going to pretty much last it forever, because that's a lot of uranium for such a small base. Oh, wait. Obviously, I need the custom turret controller, too, don't I? Okay, the final thing I need here is a little antenna, and I hope this all works. Uh, let me see what I need. I need to go grab some, some stuff from the base. But what I'm planning on doing is making it so the antenna range is really short, so it doesn't get attacked by any reavers. Uh, speaking of which, we have a lot of stuff over there. Good lord. There's three ships over there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make the antenna range really short so it doesn't get attacked by any reavers. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the base pretty much and then connect to uh, this from the base. I think that'll be the easiest way to do things. So the antenna's there. Let's hop in here. We have our uranium in there. Let's go to our control panel. Antenna, we're going to name this. We're going to give this a broadcast radius of only 1,000 kilometers pretty, or probably. 1,000 meters probably. Space, but actually no, we can do 500 because the space base is really close. Yep, I think this is looking good. Let's add a couple lights to it uh, so that it's not completely dark. Oh, that's not good. Radius up. What is attacking me? We have a Reaver Invader attacking. Let's go back to our base and get ready because uh, that's not good. <laughs> Reaver has detected a potential target. Hopefully not our little observatory. That thing does not deserve to be attacked. Uh, okay, let's hop in here. Um, what do we have? We have this thing. This is our only gun that we can really use. Unfortunately, this one's actually attacking a little bit lower, so we don't have a shot on this one. We do maybe have a shot on this one, though. And I forget, is this the fast-firing one or the slow-firing one? I don't remember. The other one should target automatically. I don't know what the range of this thing is. Let's just fire. And hope that it hits something. Okay, the other one is firing. Fire! Fire everything! <laughs> Reputation has increased, so I guess we hit them. They hit this asteroid. I think. Yeah, for sure, right? I don't know where to lead my shot. Oh, I'm, okay, look, it's actually 
I'm not even controlling it there. That's the, the thing controlling it. I guess the AI can take control of the thing. It's under us now, which is not good because we don't have any guns on the underside of our base. Which is uh, definitely a design oversight. Oh wait, here it comes. It's coming around. And it's trying to shoot at us. I don't know where to lead my shot. Okay, I think I hit it there. I have to lead my shot pretty far. Come on, aim! This thing is so slow! And lead the shot maybe right here? Oh, we have no ammo. Okay. They're hitting it. Good. Good job, turrets. Good job, turrets. I'm gonna make some ammo while this thing is uh, doing its thing. And see if we can fire. Right here, maybe. Okay, this reader, Reaver Invader, I guess, is coming around for another shot. I, I really don't know where to lead my shots here, though. I guess I should lead like they're leading, right? They're leading like all the way out here. Oh, it's spinning. Okay, I think I think they got it. Okay, it's stationary. I have to be able to hit a shot, right? Wait, where are these shots going? I can see them going like well below my crosshair, right? I think truth is I just can't hit a stationary target. <laughs> oh well, it's fine. It's out of commission, right? I'm just gonna let the AI handle it. All right. Um, anyways, uh, welcome back. Let's go and find the damage. I think we broke this thing right here. It's clanging all around. So I don't really want to go near that. Let's inspect the damage they did, because I know they fired a couple shots. I don't know if they hit anything. They did actually hit something. Um, oh, we do have actually a lot of heavy armor up here, so it's good they attacked this. But yeah, anyways, when I placed these, which I think was at the end of the last episode, or maybe off camera, I don't remember, um, I actually added a little bit of heavy armor as well. I wasn't able to complete all of it, because heavy armor is, is crazy expensive. But um, I was able to uh, complete like this little line, and apparently that line came in handy. So that's good. Um, all right, now the Reaver has been dispatched. It's still up there, but uh, it's not really a threat. It's kind of not able to move anymore. Uh, so let's continue with what we were doing. Um, and I think we're actually done with that. So let's test it out, I suppose. We're going to go to this thing. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can go to... I forget how to do this, actually. The antenna thing. Oh, it's up here, actually. Okay, so I need to find... Okay, I don't actually see it here. Did they kill our antenna? Oh, we need one more thing, actually. We need a remote controller, don't we? Uh, remote. Let's just build one of these on the other thing. Build a small ship one as well. Not a big one. Oh, wait, I actually forgot. No! They killed my observatory! Why? It was peaceful! <laughs> Why would you guys kill my observatory? Alright, whatever. Well, when they kill one observatory, another one shall be, be born. Okay, we're back with everything we need. Here's that. Here's the custom Kirk turret controller. The reactor. I can throw some uranium inside the reactor. I brought 10 this time, not 20. Because I'm afraid of it getting destroyed again. And we should be good. Okay, back in here, I'm going to go into the antenna and I'm going to set the broadcast radius down again to 200 meters instead of uh, whatever it was on. We're going to set up our custom turret controller with rotor hinge camera. And then I think we're pretty much good with that uh, setup. So let's go back to our base and try it out. All right, let's give it a try now. Hop in here, press K. We'll go up here to the top and we'll we'll do remote access and see if we can remote access our observatory. Now it's, I think it's this one because it's 112 meters away. Uh, it just didn't name itself properly. So I probably need to go and rename it, but let's go into control mode. And from here, I want to press G. I want to put my custom turret thing on here and I want to set control to that. So now I should be able to hop in here. I should be able to hop in. I should be able to hop in here. Okay, it's not doing the hop thing. Give it the camera. All right, let's try it now. We're going to click control and yes. Okay, it's the right way now. So now I have this view that I can actually move, like I can zoom in and I can actually turn around and move. So if I wanted to actually turn this around to view this planet over here, I could zoom that in as well. Even though it doesn't look great because it's not loaded in properly. But uh, but yeah, we could do that if we want to. So this is cool. Nice. Okay, so now if I wanted to look at the hangar, I highly doubt I would see anything because it's also not loaded in. And also I need to orient the right way to be able to look at it. There we go. But there, there supposedly is our hangar and that's where we're going to be going today uh, when we land on Pertam. But anyways, all right, let's get to the second part of this. Uh... Wait, did I see? Okay, those are just Ember things. 
I, I always confuse them with Reaver. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, I saw a bunch. I thought maybe a Reaver was inside one of them. Um, but anyway, let's get to the landing part because what we're going to do is we're going to make a little landing craft. And it's going to be super simple. It's just basically going to be a craft that's going to go down. Uh, and we're not going to land right next to our hangar. We're going to land a little ways away, probably. But um, it's going to be fun. Actually, should I just make a... I wonder if I should just make a buggy up here and then land a buggy. Do we, have enough, we might not have enough space for it. One, two, well, I, well we do have quite a bit of space, actually. All right, let's try it. We're going to make a little buggy, and we're going to land a buggy instead of a drop pod. Because uh, I feel like that'd be helpful once we get down to the uh, actual area. We'll be able to drive to our base. Um, anyway, let's get these built up. Right-click on those, grab it from here. And now we can start building out our uh, what's going to become our buggy. So it's going to come out this way a little bit, and then it's going to come down for the main part of it. Okay, let's see how this works, because uh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, is this new that it actually shows you the orientation the wheel's going to be in? That didn't used to be a thing, right? That's got to be new. Uh, okay, we're going to place our wheels on. So one on the right there, one on the left here. Uh, there we go. Uh, and we're, we're basically going to build our buggy facing directly down like this, and it's going to drive like that. But we're going to have our parachute on the top, so when the parachute deploys, it should right the buggy. It should make it go the right way up. And this is going to be a really small buggy. It's not going to be crazy. Maybe about that big. Um, okay, let's get our wheels in. And I really like this little pod area that we have going on, because if a reaver would attack us right now, it would not be able to do anything to us, pretty much. Um, or at least it would not be able to do anything to this thing, because it's kind of covered uh, and hidden inside this, this little area. Okay, so what we're going to need for this, we're not going to bring any sort of... Uh... Okay, I'm just looking at the ships. Okay, we're not going to bring any sort of thrust. We're just going to bring these, a battery, and a cockpit. So let's get our cockpit. Uh, we're going to go with... I want to go with a rover cockpit, but we don't have a, a, a decently sized thing. Although we could. Let's, here, let's just make it one wider, and then we just go for a rover cockpit. Okay, cockpit right there. We're going to throw a battery right here. Just to, Oh, we already have them there. Okay. Just put a battery up right like that. And we'll put two parachutes, one on each side probably, I'm thinking. Okay, this should be everything welded. I don't know why it's saying can't withdraw one display. We don't need one display anymore. We already built the, uh, the thing that requires displays. There we go, and there we go. Okay, let's add... I'm going to change the color of this in a moment. Actually, if I change the color of it, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect anything else. So let's make it like a nice orange, I think. Uh, a very bright ship so that you kind of know it's a drop pod. We'll do orange and black. You know what? Halloween is coming eventually. So let's do like a Halloween style. Maybe we'll give this these side pieces an orange color. All right. And I don't know if we'll be landing during the day or the night. So we're going to add some spotlights as well, because why not? All right. I think this thing is pretty much ready to fly. We have full stuff. Uh, what we need to do, though, the only thing we need to do actually is to... Uh, get some canvases, because that would be a really bad idea trying to go down there without canvases. We have two parachutes, and they can only work if they have canvases. So let's go to production, into our consumables, and grab two canvases. Maybe we'll put two more on our inventory, just in case something goes wrong somehow. And we, uh, we have to manually load these canvases. I'm just going to throw one in each. One here, and one here. Uh, with our canvases manually loaded, I think we're pretty much ready to go. One more thing we have to do is go in here and uh, let's actually press K, grab our um, parachutes. Okay, the only thing we're concerned with here is the dropship parachutes. So when I press that button, they're going to just open. That's all they're going to do. Was there an open close option? I don't know you could do that. We're just going to open our parachutes. We don't care about closing them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to set them so that if everything fails, dropship parachutes, I want you guys to deploy at... Uh, 200 meters, well, 300 meters. How fast are we going to be going? We're going to be going fast. Yeah, I deploy at 500 meters if all else fails. Okay, part of me wants to wait till daytime so we can actually see the planet as we're going to it. So maybe we do wait for daytime. Let's, uh, let's close this thing below us first and we'll, we'll open it up again when it's daytime. So we're going to wait a little bit. Actually, no, maybe we go to sleep because we do have a bed. So let's just go to sleep. Um... How do we get to our beds, though? Let's go down the stairs. It's kind of a long process. It's a very far walk to get to the beds in this base. But uh, but it'll give you a nice tour, actually. So we go down here. We have to go into the hangar for some reason to get to the beds, because uh, an architect did not design this base. We go upstairs. 
all the way down the super long hallway. Ow. <laughs> into the luxury room. And finally into the bed. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Sleep tight. Good morning, everybody. It's just at the crack of dawn and it's time to go. Look at the planet so lit up down there and check out the ship right there. That looks really cool. I'll take even a little screenshot right there. That looks awesome. In fact, let me take a couple screenshots in here. This would be good, uh, good thumbnail footage. Okay, so I think we're pretty much ready here. All we need to do is disconnect this. I missed an opportunity to use a merge block for this. Um, so rip, but, uh, but yeah, I hope this thing doesn't get damaged because I don't, I have to make a blueprint of it. Actually, maybe I'll make a blueprint right here. I'll, I'll snap, then make a blueprint and then get in. Uh, that's pretty fast order of operations, but I think we're good to go. Uh, let's make sure, double check that we have parachutes. One more over here. This is our pre-flight check just to make sure. Yep, we have parachutes in both. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let's get back down to Pertam. We're going to land a little bit a little bit away from the hangar, but that's why we have this rover because we'll be able to drive over there. All right, are you guys ready? Three, two, one. Disconnect. Immediately control B to uh, make a blueprint out of it. And let's hop in. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh oh, that's not good. Okay, we're starting to turn. I think we're going to be fine, though, getting out of that. Unfortunately, we don't have any gyros on this thing, so we can't orient ourselves, but it's fine. We're relying on the uh, parachutes to orient us. Now, looking at my parachute test that I did in a Space Busters video a while ago, um, if we're going a thousand meters per second, which I don't know we're going to get up to that speed, but if we did uh, get up to that speed, then we would need to pull our chute at probably 1,200 meters. Um, if we're going slower than that, we can pull out a thousand and be fine, but, uh, but yeah. So we have to be a little bit con uh, conscious of that if we see ourselves going really fast. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I'll put ourselves into a spin. That's not great for the video. Um, rip. Let's uh, maybe, do we have anything on our inventory that we can use to build some stuff? I don't know. Maybe I can do a counter spin. Why does this work? Why does this work? This is so weird. Why can I spin our ship with the wheels? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay, it's fine. We're in, a, we're in a slow spin now. Oh, look at the base over there. There we go. Leaving the base once and for all. Take a little screenshot right there. In fact, take another screenshot right here, maybe. Because we're basically flying through space in a ship, which is pretty wacky. But anyways, this is pretty much us until we get to the bottom. So um, get used to it. I guess while we're here, we're going pretty slowly. Let's go ahead and name our ship uh, the, uh, the Drop Car. <laughs> I, I don't know. Drop car. Drop cart. Why not? Drop cart. And I'll go ahead and hop out and give it another blueprint since we have ages here. So control B right there for a second blueprint. The first one is named Static Grid, which we can always go and rename it, but I, I uh, changed a couple of the configurations as well, so might as well remake the blueprint. Um, if you guys want to see this on the workshop, let me know in the comments and I'll add this weird little drop cart onto the workshop. Of course, you should probably wait until we land <laughs> to see if it actually works. Um, if it crashes into a billion pieces, maybe you don't want it, but yeah. Okay, let's get this thing on the ground. How are we doing? We're about 10, we've, we've gone about 10 kilometers at this point, a little bit farther. So we're making good time, I would say. I want to say it's going to be nice not to have to worry about Reavers anymore, but uh, we're going to Pertam, and Pertam is very notorious in our series for having a lot of Reavers. Uh, in fact, just before we launch our uh, Rigatoni 1, which by the way, we're leaving up in space, so rip Rigatoni 1, we'll come back to it eventually, um, its legacy shall live on, but right before we launched Rigatoni 1, we were attacked by Reavers pretty much non-stop, um, to the point where it's getting a little bit annoying, so hopefully that doesn't, I mean, maybe we'll have a couple episodes of just straight up combat, I can see that happening, but, um, but yeah, alright, we're gonna, it looks like we're gonna kind of get to this area, oops, let's turn ourselves a little bit this way, we're in P gravity. Okay, I can't go forward for some of these. Yeah, it won't let me go forward for some reason. But let's go ahead and pull our chute now. I want to pull it high. Well, let's wait a little bit. And let's pull it now. Let's pull it now. Let's pull it now. Parachutes! Parachutes, please! Open! Why are you guys not... Okay, maybe they can't... Maybe they can't... Oh, auto-deploy. Here we go. Okay. I don't know why. That was so wacky. It wasn't doing it. I was like, parachutes, please! Okay, let's let this thing slow us down. Uh, this is not going to be great because we have a little bit of weird stuff going on. Okay, no, it's settling down. I was worried the ship was going to kind of land at that weird, um, weird, wacky, whatever. Um, but let's press P. I'm going to turn on the parking brake just in case uh, something crazy happens on landing. We have a little bit to go down here and then we can start heading over to our hangar, which is over there. Yeah. In fact, we're probably near one of our relays, are we? Our south relays over there. 
So while we're drifting down to the bottom, if you're super new to this series, by the way, and you started very recently, um, after probably like episode 25 or so, you won't know what those relays are. Pretty much when we started this series, all the way back in episode 1, we weren't allowed to use any GPS at all. So we had no GPS coordinates, and the only way that we could uh, unlock GPS was setting up three relays around our main base. So we have three relays set up. And they're actually antenna stations. If we were to drive one, you'd see like this giant antenna. So it's, it's kind of cool. I really like that idea that we did. But here we go, we're going at a very nice slow speed on touchdown, so I like this. It should just immediately stop us. Yep, there we go. Let's let the parachutes undeploy. And we should be good to go. Alright, we now have this little rover which is going to bring us back to our home. We're very close, so uh, so it shouldn't be very, uh, very long to get there. I want to real quick go in here and change up the wheels though, because I want to give them a little bit of a speed limit. Or a little bit less power at least. Ah, uh, welcome back to the surface of Pertam, home of mountains and valleys and crevices. Uh, I missed it. I definitely did miss it a little bit. It's going to be nice to, uh, to to be building in gravity again. Well, nice and not nice. There, there are good things and bad things, of course. Actually, I forgot, I totally forgot about the dune power bank. We might actually catch a glimpse of it as, as we come over this mountain, because I think it's probably off to our left a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go around this way, just so we can maybe see it. That'd be really cool. I, I, I totally forgot that we built that. Uh, unless we're on the other side of the thing. But we're gonna have to have a, like a small tour of all of the stuff. Ooh, I gotta be careful. We're gonna have to have a little small tour of the of all the stuff that was on Pertam. Because I have totally forgotten what we had. In fact, I don't even remember this mountain, so I think we're coming at it from the back side of the hang. Oh wait, hang on, I see something. I think that's the base. Yes, okay. Those are the, uh, the three spires along with our base. And you can see the dune power bank all the way in the back there. Oh man, it's bringing back memories. Let's turn this off so we can have a nice view. Yep, Dune Power Bank all the way back there. We see our uh, lighthouse, which I think probably is destroyed, uh, up in the top, and our main base over here. So let's start off with our main base. We'll go and check it out, and then we'll drive up to our little uh, our little bunker, and then maybe we'll go. We'll take a little trip over to the Dune Power Bank just to uh, just to kind of get ourselves reacquainted because this is what we're going to be spending the next few episodes. By few, I mean probably like five, ten. We're going to do some more stuff on Pertam. And then if we get bored of that, we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to space and check out that stuff. But here's our main base of Pertam. If you watched the entire series, of course you'll remember this. And if you binged it, it was probably yesterday when we left. So you're probably like, oh, of course I remember this stuff. But yeah, welcome back. Oh gosh, I forget about all this stuff. We had a little miner here apparently. Let's uh, let's go check this out. So for me, it's been months since I've been here. Um, but for you guys, it may have just been a couple days. Yeah, I remember this thing. This is what we used to dig out the, the Passa silo up there. Um, let's check out our hangar. The OG hangar. Massive hangar, by the way. We've got uh, some ship down there. That's our... Oh, that's our little truck thing, right. And then we probably have the... Um, where was our gunner ship? Did we leave it over here? Yes, we left it over here because there was a reaver all the way off over there that we were shooting uh, with, with this. So yeah, I remember this. You can't forget Honk the Tonk. This is a, a fun little base, and it needs to be updated, because I don't think it has been updated since any of the new guns have been added. Uh, the, uh, the the giant base up here has been updated, of course, but the, the main base has not. So we need to do some updating to the main base. In fact, this can serve as a little checklist for us to do. We definitely need to finish these things right here, by the way. <laughs> They've not been finished for ages. It's been, I don't know, it's been probably a year. It feels like it, at least. All right, let's hop out of this. We need to finish this, of course, uh, and go into our bunker. Um, bunker was never fully completed. We completed a lot of it. We have a lot of it uh, where we wanted it, but no, it was never fully completed. Um, but we do have this access hatch all the way back going to the, uh, the pasta silo, which let's go check out. Let's see how this has, uh, how this has aged. Our beautiful pasta silo built on a different grid, which is pretty hilarious. But yeah, here's our pasta silo. Oh gosh, I forgot about the nightmare that is this thing. And apparently it's running out of power. But, yeah, this thing was a major nightmare. Um, it took us ages to get this this uh, this dang ship la uh, launched. Oh, it's not our pasta silo. It's, it's our pasta silo, of course. The Pertim Aeronautics Space Transport Administration, I think it was. Yeah. All right, let's head to the top and see what's up here. This was our, uh, our giant fort fortified base that we pretty much used to attack the... Uh... Oh, I remember our Bert turrets. We have Bert and Ernie. Ernie being over here. Yeah, I forgot about all this stuff. Nice. And then, of course, this is destroyed. This thing is permanently destroyed. Pretty much whenever we rebuild it, a reaver attacks and destroys it. So 
Uh, yeah. Oh, it's such a great view over the, the dunes of Pertam. And we can see the little, um, the little museum over there. That's going to be a major part of the next few episodes, by the way, completing the museum. Um, because that really needs to be completed at some point. All right, let's head back to the bottom. All right, the museum. Of course, a lot of you guys will remember that giant ship that's in the museum. We had to actually wheel down to the area, which was a horrible idea. We probably should have just uh, built up some thrusters and drove it over. Um, but it worked. We got it there eventually. Let's get down over to it. The uh, Did we ever name that ship? I don't think we did. I think that's just our first killed ship. But uh, yeah, the museum. The museum's going to be a huge undertaking, but I feel like we can do it. We just need to get a little bit of prep work on getting some iron ore. But then, yeah, other than that, it's not heavy blocks, so it should be fine. These are... I forget what these ships were. Was this our first... Oh, yeah, this was our first miner that we built. Uh, just to dig out the uh, hangar. And this one right here was our first... Ah! <laughs> our first uh, little drivey ship. Um, in fact, this one I'm pretty sure came directly from the drop pod we spawned with. So I think that's just uh, that pretty much turned into a rover. And then, of course, we have this thing. Oh, man, and I remember this. If we haven't run out of power, let me let me see if this still works. Oh, yes, it still works. All right, we have the, uh, the hologram here. So you can actually go in here and then see the hologram uh, of the ship, which I think is really cool. And then we're going to make like a little cafe out the back right here. Yeah, okay. All right, finally, let's go check out the Dune Power Bank, which has its own little rover, if I remember correctly. And that should be just off this bit over here. In fact, I think this... I remember spinning out on this little hill with that rover, so we got to be a little careful. But here is the Dune Power Bank in all of its glory, providing us with endless power. And I think some of you guys back when we built this said that we should use a tether mod. I think we are going to use a tether mod so that we can make like a tether from here to the other base. Um, because as cool as the... Uh, as cool as the trailer idea is, the novelty wears off very fast. So I think we're going to set it up so that it looks like we can have a trailer, but also we're going to have the little tether thing so we can just have the power without having to worry about carting the trailer back and forth. If this were like a multiplayer roleplay server, we would of course have someone carting that back and forth all the time, but it's just me, so I don't know. I, I feel like we should just do... Oh wait, hang on, what's this? I forgot about this. Did we have a tunnel under here going from each of the quadrants? Right, because we had to actually connect them, I remember now. We had to connect all of these uh, all these big windmill things uh, to each other. But anyway, okay, that is Pertam. Welcome back to what we have on Pertam. That's a good little introduction to everything. Uh, again, for you, it might have been a couple of days since I was here, because if you're binging this series, then maybe that's the case. But for me, it's actually been months since we left Pertam, so I don't remember a lot of this stuff. Uh, or I remember it, but like it's very vague. So, um, so getting acquainted is nice. Uh, but anyway, I think that's where we're going to end up leaving this episode. We made it back to Pertem in one piece. Uh, I've got to say this idea with the, the rover worked out very well um, and helped us get back to our hangar without any problems. Um, we got to be careful here. There's a little bit of a hill. We don't want to spin out. Okay, we're fine. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you guys liked that episode, please hit the like button. Put any comments and suggestions for what you want to see on Pertem down in the comments section below. Uh, we pretty much have anything we want to work with. Let's go into the hangar here. Um, so if you want to see a lot of, uh, of museum work, or if you want to see some more work on um, combat stuff or, or more fighting, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm just going to park this thing here for now. But anyways, we are back, baby! Welcome back. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival, now on Pertam.